I'm Joe Kane. I'm Dan Kane. And I'm Wayne Heckler. And this is the Imperfect Podcast. Be sure to check us out on hecklerkane.com and all of our social media. To the bumper. All right, so we're back with Tom Gould. He was originally born in Louisville, Kentucky, and now resides in Long Island, New York. And he is the head man, the front man, the the showrunner for the Boston Nova Beatniks. Um, Tom, thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, You said we wanted to go right up front and perform a song for us. Yeah, let's get started with some music, and then we can uh, talk. The well, the well, the well, the sycamore Son of a sailor, can I hey, hey If you got a minute, wanna hold you Hold you when the night comes around Now loving is the feeling Got me reeling I'm really believing's gonna feel good Feel it when the night comes around When the night comes around Blazing red, the sunset streams You're the girl, the girl of my dreams I guess I know how funny it seems To want to get you when the night comes around I wanna take you in my arms. I wanna hold you. Won't do you no harm when I hold you. Hold you when the night comes around. When the night comes around. Blazing red, the sunset stream. You're the girl, the girl of my dreams I guess I know how funny it seems To want to get you when the night comes around Now loving is the feeling Got me reeling I'm really believing Gonna feel good Feel it when the night comes around when the night comes around Come on, baby Come on, baby Come on, baby Yeah! Nice. Thanks. Very nice. Good stuff. That Excellent. Well, Tom, that was awesome for me. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. I got to tell you guys, I, I saw Tom for the first time 20 some odd years ago out on the beach in uh, Oyster Bay we uh, I came down with a friend of mine uh, Brian who uh, said you got to you got to check out his band you got to come check him out and they were they were out on the pier playing in Oyster Bay and what a cool like backdrop of the, of the ocean of the, the ocean of the of the the bay behind you and just the 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 sound that was coming out I was immediately hooked well thanks I was immediately hooked and and I have to say before we go too far is that uh, you know in 20 years I've met thousands of people and I gotta say that Joe and Dan's parents are two of the nicest people you could ever want to meet and uh, I wanted to say that here. thank you oh, thank you yes. thank you thank you said nothing about us but yeah. <laughs> our parents are great we, we suck but our parents are great where did they go wrong <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about you. You uh, you have on your website now. It says that you are seventeen albums in. Uh, you are releasing a new album soon. That's correct. Actually, uh, Wednesday, the uh, September twentieth is the release date. Or actually, it's Tuesday. Uh, it's called For the Fun. The album. This album hasn't even been released yet, and I'm already actually starting three other projects. Uh, largely because as this. CD title says for the fun that's really all there is anymore in music it's it's either you're having fun doing it and making it or or that's it because the music business is gone pretty right. much you it's know, not the same yeah, as it's been well no. there's no uh, I have a friend who's a vice president of uh, Atlantic Records and they say they spend their whole days uh, their their business is tracking down the pirates and 
there's no tracking them down because right. of the internet. Yeah. Everybody right. gets everything free. You sell one CD and the rest of the world has it. That's it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a whole different world. And, you know, in a way, it's kind of good because there's no mercenaries anymore. You're not going into them, you know, making music for money anymore. You're making it for the fun. And that's what I do. And I love it. And uh, one of the reasons why I'm back in the studio rather than out pounding the pavement is that I... I love making them. I hate promoting them. So uh, I figured, well, why bother? I'll just, you know, it's out there. It's on iTunes, Amazon, all of that sort of thing. But me personally, all I care about is making the next one. Yeah. Now, when did you get started as a musician? Well, it started uh, very early. I um, I was a uh, young enough to, well, too young, I basically, when Elvis hit, but young enough that I sort of knew what Elvis was. But when I was a kid, my... Um, uh, Grandparents used to come to visit us, so they'd spend a month with us every year, and they would uh, come into the city uh, on the train and uh, come into Grand Central Station. And this one time that we were dropping them off in February, we were driving uh, through Manhattan, and there was a commotion going on, and my older brother said, stop the car, I want to get out, I want to see this. And of course, I wanted to see it too, so I'd hop out with my brother. we go around the corner, and the block is packed with girls young <laughs> girls and we see up in the uh, sticking out of a hotel window these couple of guys like waving you know with the the mop tops mm. and uh, it was the Beatles and, the, and as wow. soon as they stuck their head out the window the whole block of girls just screamed <laughs> and the, the energy that was that it was it was nothing short of a, ph a phenomenon it was amazing and and uh, you know once you get that energy in you and so of course i i followed the beatles uh, quite literally uh started playing a guitar i picked up a bass now i thought what got you started was those, those screaming women you sort of did me <laughs> just being in the center of that maybe i should play an instrument well, uh, you know <laughs> I, I can't deny that that was a uh, uh, you know i I was just uh, 14 years old, so I was beginning to understand <laughs> that that would be a good thing as well. And uh, uh, So, yeah, that was a lot of fun. It's interesting because up until about a year ago, there was, I'd say, 30 years that I went without not being booked. Hmm. I'd had a gig for 30 straight years. Wow, that's very impressive. Yeah, yes. it was... Uh, yeah, it's just you know, just what I love to do. I mean, I love to get out and play. And the, I guess my first album was in '94 or something okay. like that. Yes. That was Eleven Eleven. That was Eleven Eleven. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> I pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> I loved Eleven Eleven. It had uh, Jack Ni Jack 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 Jack, uh, which was a story about Jack Nicholson, I suppose. <laughs> which is interesting because um, you know the the title Eleven Eleven uh, came because. When I was doing mix downs and things like that, I would, um, uh, you know, you'd have a tape recorder. Either it would have it was the reel to reels of back then, but some of them had real time counters that would seconds and minutes, and some of them just had a counter that would have been numbers going. But I noticed every time that I was working on this song, Jack Jack, the counter or would say eleven eleven. It would either be eleven minutes, eleven seconds, or it would just say eleven eleven. And it was just oh, I started seeing it everywhere, everywhere. And uh, when I was getting down to uh, finishing the album, I was uh, at a uh, studio in Centerport, and we came out of the studio after a mix down, and the wind was coming through the trees, and it actually made a howling sound. You know, you've always heard that it was a romantic thing, though. The wind began to howl and all that. <laughs> But we were standing out there going, <laughs> actually hearing the howling. So I got all excited. I, I come home, I tell my wife, I got the name for the album. We're going to call it The Night of the Howling Wind. And she looked at me and she said, that is so pretentious. You can't call it that. Uh -huh. I said, well, we're going to press in two weeks. What the heck? I don't even have a name for the album. She goes, well, why don't you just call it Eleven Eleven? That's all you've been talking about for the last year. And oh, so nice. I did. And afterwards, you know, I found out that... There's a lot of stories around the 1111, and I didn't realize, uh, somebody pointed it out just only a few years ago, that Jack Jack, which was the song that got this whole 1111 started, 
somebody said, well, do you know that the jack is the 11th card in the deck? And I went, oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> it's deeper than you even could have imagined. <laughs> oh, it's, it's wild. Um, you, you moved on and you, you did Heart to Beat was your next album. Uh, that That's was right. that was where I, I, I became a true fan. Uh, oh, to be honest with you, I I I saw I heard Heart to Beat and all the songs on there, Red Red Johnny and uh, <laughs> Fingers Fingers in the Cake, uh, um, mm. and that's I, I really said okay, well this guy's got it. Uh, so you also ended up releasing a French version of Heart to Beat later on. That's right. I um, it was actually the Eleven Eleven album, but that wasn't the Eleven Eleven album. But the Eleven Eleven album when it came out, I went into a Bleaker Bob's uh, re- record store on uh, mm. in the Greenwich Village. And uh, I walked in with the al- album and asked if, you know, could you, you know, carry this in your store? And uh, he says, well, let me have it. And he grabs it and he opens it up and he's going to put it on. And I'm all of a sudden thinking, wait a minute, because you look around the store. Back then it was, you know, it was all uh, punk and uh, you know, mm-hmm. razor blades and yeah, safety yeah. pins. And I say, you're going to put on this little the hot, little <laughs> cute little album and you're going to throw me right the heck out of your store. <laughs> Anyway, he puts on the first uh, song, and uh, which was a very acoustic number, and he, he he looks right up and he goes, "You know who would love this? Sky Dog would love this." And uh, he says, "I'll give you this name, and it's this guy Sky Dog, Mark Zermati from uh, Paris." And I I sent it over to him, and uh, since that was already out, he wasn't interested. He says, "Well, when you work on the next album, which was the Heart to Beat album, send me the the tapes of it." And uh, so I sent him the, the pre-release of that, and he licensed it and packaged it up and and uh, sold it in in Europe. Wow. And uh, I found out well just a couple of weeks ago. I I'd never seen the guy, never laid eyes on the guy. Uh, but I was reading Chrissy Hines' book. Um, the uh, it's called Reckless. My life is a pretender. <laughs> and in the book, she talks about how she he put her up. She was once before she became a pretender and just sort of wandering about. She stayed with Mark Zermati, and there's a picture of her with his her arm around him. And turns out that he's the one who like broke Lou Reed and uh, Iggy Pop and a lot of the. Uh, the, the bands of that era came through him in, in Paris. Yeah. So you, you had a couple of stories that you wanted to share specifically about Louisiana or something like that that you had mentioned to me before? Well, uh, we were talking about this train that came in that my grandparents used to come in on, and it was called the 20th Century Limited. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you'd go down into Grand Central Station and the, the steam and there'd be the train, with the, with the sleeper cars and all of that sort of thing, and they'd roll out this... This this uh, big carpet right next to it that said 20th Century Limited, and uh, that train is actually uh, cinematic. It uh, Alfred Hitchcock used it in North by Northwest. Yeah. Uh, I just saw a Fred Astaire movie the other night that uh, mm-hmm. he gets off the train in New York, and it's a 20th Century Limited. And uh, so back in in the 90s, when the 20th Century really was limited. Uh, I read, <laughs> I read a, a news article that they decided they weren't going to name trains anymore. And I, mean, I thought, well, that's, you know, first of all, why would somebody even just decide that? But uh, It's uh, like a rule that somebody set down. Yeah, we're not naming we're trains. We're not naming trains anymore. So I, it's I, too painful when something happens <laughs> to them. <laughs> yeah. So one. I said, you know, well, as long as they're still naming songs, uh, I was going to call this one the 20th Century Limited. So I, I wrote a song... Uh, a, a somewhat of a train song about the, my experience with my my grandparents and uh, coming in on the and you know the, which led me to see the Beatlemania firsthand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, great experiences lead to great um, artistic pieces. No, no matter whether what your medium is, whether it's painting or whether it's it's a television or 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 uh, music or whatever your your medium is. It's all about the experiences that you have, absolutely, and that's the only way to stay true to yourself is to uh, be able to relive and and put a piece of your experiences out there for others to to appreciate. And did you want to hear the uh, song, the Twentieth Century Limited? Or I would it? love to hear it. <laughs> I, it's a little greedy for me because I, I this is one of my favorites that you do. Oh, <laughs> well, let's uh, let's move on let's, over to the cow. Let's right. wobble over. Twentieth Century Limited. Thank you. 
seems like just early this morning Seems just like yesterday night I got the sense of her calling She got the sense that I might Well now something quite wonderful happens Each time she steps in the room I got some radishes growing and she's chasing away Dr. Doom, yeah, Doom, yeah, Doom. Well, I'm passing by uncovered window, keeping ahead of the light. She's got me dancing with shadows, keeping me up, yeah, it's keeping me up, well, it's keeping me up all night, yeah. Well, outside the casino in Vegas She likes to howl at the moon I got this love that keeps growing We're making love half past noon Yeah, noon, yeah, noon Yeah, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes that train's into Memphis And sometimes the train's have along Hey, I got this feeling I'm restless If you got the feeling, come on, yeah, come on Hey, come on, yeah, come on Well, I'm passing by uncovered window Keeping ahead of the light She's got me dancing with shadows It's keeping me up, yeah It's keeping me up, well It's keeping me up all night mm -hmm. Yeah Well now sometimes that train's into Memphis Sometimes the trains have a long Hey, I got this feeling I'm restless If you got the feeling, come on, yeah, come on hey, Come on, yeah, come on Yeah You know, it's it's a lot of fun to have you down here and actually performing. Uh, you know, we usually don't we don't get too many musicians in studio actually playing for us. So it, this is a treat for all of us. Yep. We're, we're well, enjoying this. Yeah. I'm glad you're enjoying. It. I'm I'm enjoying it as well. It's fun having a band, obviously, and you get out and you play. But what I realize is, we were five years we were playing. We hadn't played a new song in five years because you're always you're getting a gig, and then everybody's busy so you don't get to practice as much as you should and so when you do get together you just run through the material you know sure. and you, and so you have the same 20 songs that you go out of the house with and uh and play and uh as a songwriter i've got notebooks filled with songs and i just realizing you know I've got more songs and I've got time left. And, uh, uh, and uh, A lot of people say that, like going on tour and getting to perform your songs are great because you get to see the uh, immediate reaction from it. But mm. unfortunately, what you're doing is you're creatively stifling yourself because yeah. you don't have the chance to be creative while you're on the road. Yeah, in fact, that's when Chrissy Hines said that in the book. She figured, well, you know, when I go out on the road, that's when I can write the next album. But you get out on the road and it's just not conducive to writing. You know, the writing's a whole personal lonely kind of off by yourself uh, kind of thing and it and the 
the party atmosphere of, of touring is not conducive to writing yeah. songs. <laughs> the, actually, the original band, we were uh, playing in Manhattan uh, at a place called the Nightingale Bar around the time uh, other bands that were playing the Nightingale at that time were the Blues Travelers, Spin Doctors, Joan Osborne, uh, you know, that, that group, God Street Wine, uh, you know, there's a lot of them. And uh, we were calling ourselves Flyboys at that time, uh, largely because, uh, uh, well, I had a band called the Rhythm Bandits. That was the first band. And I felt that people were having trouble spelling rhythm. You know, it's a tough, it's a tough <laughs> word. To so I wanted to make it a little easier. And, and I found out that... Uh, I share the same birth date, uh, you know, day, not date, uh, as uh, Charles Lindbergh. And I thought, well, that's interesting. You know, he slapped together this wooden airplane and expected it to fly across the ocean. I well. slapped together a little band and expected it to, you know, rule the world or whatever. And uh, and so I figured, well, I'll call ourselves the Flyboys. So we were Flyboys for a while. And, uh, and while we were playing the Nightingale, I heard somebody said to me, you know, there's a band in San Diego called themselves the Fly Boys. And so I said, oh, really? And they were they were doing pretty well. But so for a while I figured, okay, we'll call ourselves, we'll change our name. We'll call ourselves the San Diego Fly Boys. Uh, hmm. But uh, that didn't uh, didn't clear that, anything That'd be up. a little bit of irony. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, Get some bookings across the coast. <laughs> and it was about this time that, that hip-hop started coming in, and fly became an urban term. So people thought that we were going to be a hip-hop band. Mm -hmm. And uh, the original lineup at this point, I was playing, I was actually fronting the band. I wasn't playing anything. And... Uh, uh, this guy Eddie O'Rourke was on uh, draw, on uh, guitar, and his brother Bob was on bass, and George Vamondi was on uh, drums. And George has been with me to this day. And uh, this was early uh, early '90s, around '92, I think. And we were practicing one day, and and Eddie and Bob O'Rourke, these guys were amazing, uh, still are, I'm sure. But uh, well, Bob's in Italy, and Eddie's in in uh, California to let you know how people spread out and uh, and they used to just come out these non sequiturs coming out of their head and Bob stepped up and we were about to do one of my songs uh, in practice and and Bob went up to the microphone and he said and now for the Boston over beatnik sound of Tom Gould and I looked at him and going where the heck did that come from and I, I you know I I, I like the I like Beatnik and Bossa Nova's The Dance of Love. You can't go wrong. And, and the name just stuck. And I, I couldn't get rid of it and, uh, because we weren't a Bossa Nova band, you know. I mean, yeah. we're, we're, that was another thing. You know, we, we went from Flyboys where people were expecting us to be a hip-hop band to <laughs> now being the Bossa Nova Beatniks. And people would come in with, you know, salsa outfits on, figuring that they're going to salsa. And I, I'd <laughs> say, yeah, sorry, but you know, my apologies to Joe Beam. But we're, you know, we're more of a hybrid, which... If you look at the history of Bossa Nova, Bossa Nova became a hybrid between the samba and the blues. And so I figured, well, we're we're taking that hybrid idea a step further. And we you know, bring in the beatnik, which is l focused on the lyrics, you know, the, the, the poetry of beatniks. And, uh, and anyway, so, but I it was always in the back of my mind that, you know, we can't be calling ourselves Bossa Nova Beatniks <laughs> if we're not doing Bossa Nova. And at the time we were playing CBGB and um, the woman who did the booking was a woman named Louise. And I told her, I said, you know, we're, for now we're calling ourselves Bossa Nova Beatniks, but we're, we're going to come up with a new name. And she goes, no, you can't change that name. It's a great name. <laughs> and I figured, well, this lady has seen everything booking right. cbgb's she's seen thousands of bands and i figured well you know if she thinks it's a great name who am i <laughs> to argue so i've been living with it and uh, you know to, in, in deference to the the people of brazil and and joe beam and and the bossa nova movement we do try to do something 
bassa or samba on at least one cut on each album but, oh that's good <laughs> right but, to pay tribute to it i do you know yes and but then again you know i don't want to be labeled like i said yeah. i was a child of the beatles and if you look at a beatles album they're doing country they're doing rock they're the helter skelter they you know they do everything and i thought well that's what you do you yeah. know if you're a songwriter you don't say oh well i'm a reggae band so i have to make a reggae song you know you know i'm a I'm a musician, I'm a, a songwriter, I'm going to write the song, and if the song happens to be a reggae song, it'll be reggae. If it happens to be a country song, it'll be country. Of course, in today's market, uh, radio stations, if you don't... If you don't fit the niche, it, you're not going to get it. You know, you, you go you go to, like, CD Baby covers my uh, albums, and uh, when you submit an album, they always say, okay pick a genre that you're in you know click on the box and i look at the 150 boxes i go i don't fit in any of them <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's a, that's a, another reason why I, I have removed myself from the whole promotion and all that yeah. I, I just i just want to make the music and let somebody else figure it out later on what it is well that's the beauty of it and then you get discovered for certain things and we have uh, over here um can you hold that up, Wayne? Just uh, towards that camera over there. Um, th it's called Demon on Wheels, and he got featured in uh, one of his songs. In which song three was Three of them, it? actually. Oh, three of them. Yeah, there's a song called uh, Xanti Misfits that's on there, um, a song called Worlds Will Collide, and a song called uh, Bad Little Baby. So those three songs are on Demon Wheels, which is an indie film. Indie film. And uh, kind of fits into our, our normal format sure. of things. And well, I, that's why I wanted to bring that in, because uh, I, I watched the uh, podcast uh, and uh, noticed that you're primarily about films, and I love films. And uh, this came out a year ago. I'm so proud of it. Um, it's about a guy who used to be a rum runner in, uh, in uh, the Catskill Mountains. And he uh it was in the 70s or earlier that he did this and he had this shelby mustang that was the cops couldn't catch him and you know i sure they knew where he lived and stuff but they 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 had to actually catch him and they never could and so it, it was something for them, them all to do on a saturday night you know it's, it wasn't safe or anything like that but to, so it tells the story uh, how he, when he stopped being a rum runner, he put the car in the garage and then he became a mechanic and he was making his living, but he got the urge to get the car back out again. And so the movie is about him uh, rebuilding this car. And, and uh, Carol Shelby, who, who designed the Shelby Mustang, uh, is actually interviewed in the film and he died during the making of the film. Uh, so this is the last interview with Carol Shelby. Hmm. And... Uh, and it's about, you know, and the, and the documentary gets into the relationship with the guy's wife who's looking at the books and saying, you know, this, this car could bury us, you know, as far as financially. It's called Demon on Wheels, and uh, it's, a, it's, it's a really cool documentary. Well, I'll I'll have to give it a, a look. Yep. I honestly haven't until you. I, I didn't even know you were bringing that tonight. So <laughs> yes. Well, that's my only copy, so I'm not leaving. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I will I will find it. I will dig it up. Trust me. Um, uh, a couple other things. You have this other album here, which is Tommy Numbers and the Wildcats, which is also you. Yes. Um, and it is a it's a it's a series of covers that he did, and um. All, that's all right, Mama. Boss Nova Baby. I guess he had to pay tribute. I had to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, don't. Uh, Ruby Baby. Little sister. Um, is that is that little sister? Is that Stevie Ray Vaughan? Little sister? Or is no, that... it's uh, Elvis. Elvis is little sister. Okay. Uh, well, not Elvis is little sister. But these are just some of the songs <laughs> um, that are on this CD. Um, and, and it's not under the Boss Nova Beatniks uh, umbrella. Right. Although it is you. So. Tom, I got to tell you, it's been a pleasure having you here. This this has been uh, mind blowing to me because <laughs> I've I've been a fan for twenty some odd years. You. Um, you, uh, Tom has a new album coming out uh, again. It's called for the fun, f for, the for, fun. The fun. for the fun, for the fun. All right, Boston over beat next. Tom Gould, uh, you gonna play us out with another song? Yeah, if you'll join me, I would love to. All right, I'd be honored. This is a, another cinematic song in a way that was inspired by uh, Groucho Marx. So this one's called I Gotta Run. This is another one from the sequel to the Tommy Numbers album. I gotta run, look 
Look out, babe, I gotta run. I gotta run, split jump, bed, baby, I gotta run. And though I've only just gotten here, I gotta run. I gotta move, so much I wanna see. And there's a great big world just out there waiting for me. And I won't be happy till you set me free. Set me free now. Come on. It'll be a fine, fine day when you figure out where I've gone. Be a fine, fine day when you figure out where I've gone. Been around the wide, wide world, but I never, ever, ever left home. That's right. I gotta run. Look out, babe, I gotta run. I gotta run, split jump, bad baby, I gotta run. And though I've only just gotten here, I gotta run. One more time, Joe.